Hi, I'm Michael Chernoff, Managing Director of Strategic IP Services for Murgatroyd. I'm here with Eden Streit, the Director of US Managed Services. Hello, Eden. Hi, Michael. It's really great to speak with you today about our docketing services. Before I get into docketing, I'd like to learn a little bit more about yourself. Could you tell me a little bit about you and your experience in the IP services field? Hi, Michael. I've been doing this for far too long, more than I like to admit to because it makes me old. But I've spent 14 years in-house and I spent the rest of my career, which is over 25 years, providing services and working at law firms. And with respect to docketing, can you tell me a little bit about some of the docketing experience that you have? So way back when I actually worked at a law firm of four people and I was responsible for all of our docketing. And back then it was in a paper book. So I had to become quite neurotic about making sure that everything was perfect and accurate and doing all of the calculations in my head or on paper. And that has served me really well because I've translated it over to how we do it electronically. You know, it's nice that we have services that automatically do a lot of the calculations for us. But in the end, one of the things that I like to teach my people is all of the rules and laws that we have to abide by when we're docketing. So what is docketing? Let's start there. Uh, that's, that's hard, Michael. Uh, <laughs> so docketing at its core is taking a set of due dates or a set of dates and calculating due dates from those so that everything is in order because you know that everything we do in the IP world is structured. There are timely due dates that must be abided by so that you can file things on time, really. That's its core. It sounds like something that many companies use Excel for, just to create a spreadsheet. So what's wrong with that? Or what are the potential problems with just keeping your docket on an Excel spreadsheet? There are so many problems with that. And the first one that I think just about everybody's experienced is the corruption of your spreadsheet. And even if you have a spreadsheet that has really good data in it and gets corrupted and you may have backup copies, whatever data you've done in between is now lost. Somebody sorts the wrong way, puts on the wrong filter, everything could go awry with a spreadsheet. It's just not a reliable way to keep your information. Even if you're doing what we call the secondary docket, so an in-house person who's got a spreadsheet of all of their docket, even if they've got this, you know, Bible of docketing, it can go bad so many ways. And then it's very difficult for them to figure it out, even if they're getting the information from their outside counsel. Even you've worked with many companies that have started with a spreadsheet, though, and then reached a certain level of maturity when it was time to use an IP docketing system. What's the right point for a small company to transition from an Excel spreadsheet docket to an IP management system? If you can afford to do it, because there are costs associated with it, from the beginning is really the best point. And you find a docketing system that will grow with you. And it's not just about your immediate needs. What are your needs going to be in the future? Especially for a company who's growing, a lot of the docketing systems provide a portal for their inventors to either see their inventions or submit their inventions. And so really thinking ahead at what they can do and how they want to expand in the future. For example, they may not be managing all of their office actions and things in-house, but a lot of them would like to grow where they have enough of a department where they can bring those things, or at least some of them, back in-house. If you don't have the right docketing system or the right tools, it's going to be very difficult to ever manage those types of dates. Well, one of the barriers to entry, as you mentioned, is the cost. Oh. I think a lot of companies think that getting a docketing system is cost prohibitive. How do you respond to that? There's a lot of different databases. Most people have heard of, you know, the big boys out there, but they haven't heard of some of the small providers. There are actually decent systems that you don't maybe need to 
sign a long-term contract with, and they can at least house your data and provide you a stepping stone to a new database. One of the other cost prohibitive avenues of getting into a database is also the onboarding. And that's where our group comes in and we provide things all around docketing. So instead of just doing the input of all of the numbers, we do things like onboarding the portfolio. So if you have a spreadsheet or you just have a list of cases, we can go in and farm all of the data from public websites and some commercial websites that we use to get all of the data together and onboard it. And then I can work in between the company and the docketing provider to help smooth things along. I talk the language of the company, I can talk the language of the service provider, and we go through, and most of the time I can negotiate a lower rate for the onboarding because I am making these transitions into it so that they don't have to clean the data, they don't have to review it, and they're going to get something that's easy for them to actually import to their docketing system. About how many docketing systems have you worked with in your career? All of the big boys that you've heard of, I've worked in all of those and probably a dozen or more little ones that you've never even heard of and aren't on your radar. Care to name a few of the big ones and the little ones? Anaqua, LaCorpio, Foundation IP, IP Folio, Symphony, little ones, Alt Legal, Docket Track, so a lot. Given your experience with the different docketing systems, it's almost like you speak 17 different languages. Do you see it that way? No, because in my head, it's all the same. <laughs> so, or at least it all translates the same. But I would assume that would be the same for any speaker of multiple languages. It's just in your head. I imagine one of the services that Murgatroyd can provide is just helping a company that's looking to get their first docketing system or switch from their existing docketing system to a new docketing system. I imagine that given your experience that you can provide some pretty valuable advice in that process and, as you said, help negotiate fees with the service provider, given your relationships with various service providers around the globe? We do uh, quite a bit of that. And some of it is just a piece of friendly advice, sometimes over a cup of coffee to help them, because it's really a difficult task trying to choose a new service provider. I mean, between the costs and not knowing, you know, the what ifs that come with it, just being able to have someone who can help guide you, because there is no Valhalla of databases. That's just a fact. Every database has its good points. Every database has its not so good points. And, you know, it's just a matter of prioritizing what's going to be the best for the corporation or the law firm. And as we know, getting the database and getting your data into the database is only half the battle. The other half is the daily docketing and the staff required to maintain the databases, to make sure that new cases are being entered, to produce reports, and do other various tasks that require a person sitting operating the database. So I think that's where your group comes in. Many companies, the ones especially that are just switching to a database or switching to a bigger database, the idea of having to hire a full-time paralegal to manage that database can be overwhelming. Can you talk to us a little bit about how we help companies, not only if they need help selecting the database, we can help them with that, but can you talk about how we can help them after they select the database and then day to day? So after they select the database, even if they have done it themselves and onboarded it, a lot of times it comes with little landmines, I like to call them, in your data, where you think that on the surface everything is perfect, and then you dig down into it and something is either missing or something is mapped wrong, and it goes into the wrong place. And so my team has honed the skill of going into these databases and trying to find where those little landmines are, as well as adding any additional fields, especially if you started in the spreadsheet, there's a lot of fields that you probably don't have in there. And we can go and get the data and actually upload it by hand into the docketing system. For the day-to-day, -day, we provide those services to our clients literally day-to-day -day right now. We have a lot of clients who 
don't have docking departments or they don't have enough people in their docking departments to fill the demand. And so we're extremely flexible. We're not one of those out of the box solutions. If you need somebody just one day a week, we staff one day a week or so many hours a month. Or if you need somebody full time that's just yours who you can pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, Raul, I need this today. And they will do that for you. I like to joke that it's a concierge docketing service because we do whatever it is our clients need us to do and try to work with them. And before I place anybody or even provide services, I like to sit down with the client and talk with them about what they really need because in your head you might need one thing, but after a discussion you really need this other thing. And so I don't want to provide a service that they don't need because that's not good for us, it's not good for them. Thank you. So as papers come in from various patent offices, then the Murgatroyd team would process each of those papers and docket them according to the instructions from the client. Is this all done by paper? Is this done electronically? How do we how do we handle the flow of documents? About 99% of it's all electronic, and what we generally do is have a dedicated inbox for these papers to come in, and we process them, and then for the databases that allow us to upload the documents, we'll upload the documents to these databases. We do get a certain amount of paper in, and we usually scan it, review it, and then upload it as well. But... Really, most people don't use paper except for the USPTO and the EPO right about now. Are these services billed hourly? Is this a monthly fee, a per use fee? How do we go for these services? So again, we like to be really flexible because there really is the difference of opinion, flat fee versus hourly. And so we try to work with our clients to do what they prefer as well as work with whatever billing requirements that they have, whether it's e-billing upload or whether they want it in paper. But if we can work out a flat fee, I think for most corporate corporate clients, it really does work out better because they can then budget for how much it's going to cost them each month and each year. And again, you know, we had one client who came to us and they had so much money that they needed to spend in their budget. They said, we're going to be using your docketing all of next year, but we have all the money to spend right now. And I'm like, we can just give you a bill for next year. It's really, you know, what is going to be best for our clients? That's the whole goal of this business is how can we best serve our clients? That's great. Thank you for answering that. I'd like to talk now about clients that already have a docketing system. So they don't necessarily need our advice on to switch. They're either overwhelmed by the amount of data that they have to manage. Perhaps someone just recently left or somebody took a temporary leave of absence. How can we help those clients that have an existing docketing system? They're overloaded. They need some additional help. How can we help? So we have a lot of those clients, too. We had somebody who was the primary paralegal at the company going on vacation for a month, and they used an aqua, which we're very familiar with. So we came in and we talked with her just about some general workflow because they had workflow for invention disclosures. They had workflow for getting things to their law firm and then reporting out to their inventors. We had a talk. We outlined what the procedures were, and she went on vacation for a month, came back and was so happy that they actually hired us for other services and we're still providing those years later. But we're basically filling the gap for what it is that they needed. Other companies that we've worked with, we have one client who our law firm provides all of the foreign prosecution and we take all of the foreign prosecution docketed into their databases and then we also produce all of the IDSs for their U.S. counsel based on this, just kind of streamlining services for them and including the cost so that it's much lower than them trying to hire a person full-time to fill that position, as well as it's lower cost for us to produce the IDSs. So So I know that all of our clients, the data is pristine. Well, I would say most of our clients, the data is pristine before their, before their clients, before their clients. I mean, so for those clients that the data needs a lot of work, needs a lot of cleanup. 
how can we help those clients? They come to us, they'd like docketing services, but before that, their data really needs help. They've got fields that are not normalized. They've got some records fully filled out and other records are only partially filled out. How can we help them in a cleanup project? So in a cleanup project, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One is the spreadsheet, if they have the spreadsheet. And some of the databases allow uploads of these spreadsheets. So we go in and we look at the data. We find the cases. We go to public records like the USPTO or the EPO or the JPO. And we look at the actual data in there and fill all of the gaps as well as review the data that's in there. Because a lot of times titles are wrong or there's not all of the inventors. And we fill that in for upload. Other databases aren't quite as friendly for that back-end upload. We usually export reports from the databases so we can help hone in where the data is missing or wrong. And then we'll go into those individual records in the database and fill in the information for them. That's great. How long does a cleanup project take or can it take? Well, it really depends on the size of the data. So we had one cleanup that was about 8,000 records, and it needed to be done within two months. And we did it. We were able to provide the staffing for that. But reasonably, it, de- it really just depends on the scope of how much data that we're looking at, how many case records, and how many fields but we are able to turn around some of these very quickly if there is the need. Eden, you spoke about us being able to provide docketing services from our location, receiving emails, being able to dock it into, all of these docketing systems presumably are accessible via the web remotely. And that's what allows us to be extremely cost effective by allowing our people to wherever they are log into the databases and provide the docketing services. What about those clients that might want somebody on site? Are we able to accommodate those clients? We are. It's not necessarily the preferred, especially in the climate right now with COVID. It's not necessarily the best option, but we do have clients who feel strongly about having someone in the office. We had one person who spent a month in Boston for one of our clients getting his sea legs under what it is that they do and wrapping his head around all of the backlog because they had about a 15,000 email backlog that they needed to dock it. So getting in there, And after the month, you know, they had contemplated wanting to keep him in Boston longer, but they were so happy with him that he ended up working remote and has for several years now. It's been almost a full-time secondment for two and a half years. That's great. And so basically, if a client needs a secondment to begin, maybe for the first few weeks or the first month, it's feasible for us to be able to come up with a proposal that would allow us to be on site for the beginning of the relationship and then transition to a remote working relationship as we've already done the setup and and establish ourselves within the company. Absolutely. And again, it's what's best for the client. Some people really like to see the person and sit down with the person and point at the screen while they're explaining what it is that they want. And it gives them a measure of comfort that we understand what it is that they need. So it's it's fine. Every client is different. And it sounds from what you've described that we're able to be flexible and be able to meet our clients' needs. Can you talk about some of the options that clients may choose or have asked and we've been able to accommodate them? Any special requests that we've been able to accommodate with respect to data? Maybe it's producing reports or perhaps it is working with the vendor in certain ways. Is there anything that it's a little out of the ordinary, but we've been able to handle? I guess I don't consider those things out of the ordinary because (laughs) we provide them uh, regularly. We just set up some new reports for one of our clients who is trying to manage their India Form 3s. Um, We have another client who every Monday he wants a specialized docket report. And so we prepare this specialized docket report and deliver it to him. So it's in his inbox when he gets to the office on Monday morning. 
We do all of those things, especially with Foundation IP. They have an integration with the USPTO private pair. And we go in and we help do the setup because there's some back end setup that needs to be done. And it, if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, it can be a very daunting task. And so we go in and we do things like that regularly as well. What about inventor award programs? Are we able to help with inventor award programs with what we're doing in the docketing services space? Absolutely, because your docket is integrally tied into most inventor award programs, whether it's the invention disclosures, the application filings, or the patent grants. While I was in-house in both companies, which were large global companies, I managed the inventor award programs at both, and they were similar but not the same. So I'm very familiar with how to manage those different inventor award programs. We do some for our clients now where we provide quarterly reports or yearly reports on what it is that or on who it is that they need to pay because no inventor wants to be not paid. So making sure that these are accurate and nobody gets a phone call, why didn't I get my money is always very important for us. Certainly don't want to mess with anyone's money. Understand yeah. that. If there's one piece of advice that you could give someone who is looking to not only purchase a docketing system, but also staff the docketing of the docketing system, what would be the advice? Before you get started, you should do what? Have clean data. <laughs> Okay. Junk in, junk out. And so it doesn't matter whether you get one of the most expensive, pretty databases or one of these inexpensive options. If you have garbage for your data, your database is worthless in the first place. That's very sage advice. And I'm assuming that we can help clients clean their data prior to importing it into any database, which I think would save them from hours, if not years of trouble in the future. Would that be an accurate statement? Absolutely. I mean, making sure that everything that gets in there and gets in as accurate and complete as possible will help you. And if you have a database that's got a lot of gaps, even if you have a great docketing support system, whether it's outsourced or whether it's in-house, if they are constantly having to look up everything, fill it in, double check to make sure it's right, that's a waste of their time and your resources on doing your docketing. Thank you very much. Eden, I want to thank you for spending the time today discussing your group and our docketing services from Murgatroyd. If anyone has any questions about docketing and docketing services, how can they contact you? You can contact me directly at eden.strite at murgatroyd.com, or if you can't remember that, info at murgatroyd.com. And all of the information about Murgatroyd and our docketing services can be found on our website at www.murgatroyd.com. Thank you again, Eden, for joining us. I really appreciate the time that you spent with us to talk about docketing. My pleasure. We love what we do, and we're very excited to share it with other people.